Let's say you want to add internet service, whether your primary or backup internet, and get something like Starlink here, so maybe Starlink Mini. And for whatever reason, you just can't mount it nearby where your router is. Maybe there's tree coverage, something like that. So it has to be further away. Now you could try to move your Unify router closer to the Starlink. That's usually not possible. You probably have that all set up. You know, your other option that might be a little bit too labor intensive if it's even close enough is route an ethernet cable to the router. But the other thing you can do that's a lot easier is just route the Starlink to a nearby switch and you can actually pass that Starlink connection, that internet connection through your existing cabling back to your router, wherever that unified console is. So in this video, I'll show you kind of the hard part, which is how to configure the unified gear to make this work. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Bogdan Shferny, founder of Apex One IT, and we do networking and security. Now, if you visit the link in the video description, you'll see that we offer hourly remote support. And this video is actually a result of a support call we had with Ryan, who faced a very similar situation. So in his case, he had a main, an office, and not a detached garage, he actually had kind of like this. So an office and exterior. So he already had a flex switch mounted, powering like a camera, outdoor wireless access point, and he wanted to add a Starlink Mini. So it wasn't feasible for him to route another cable from the Starlink down. Here he had power in the roof and things like that, so he can just plug in the Starlink to the power that's there and plug in right from the back of the Starlink, you know, the Ethernet cable they provide even, and just plug it into the existing flex switch that he has. So you might be in a similar scenario, maybe like this, right? A main house, a detached garage where a Starlink Mini makes more sense. It could also be a similar situation where you have a pole maybe with cameras mounted. Uh, that's maybe nearby a lake that's a better location for the Starlink terminal. That's where this applies. And we'll go over a couple limitations. Most of it just has to do with the switch and the you know bandwidth that you can get through here. But especially for a Starlink Mini, uh, this is a perfect setup. Now, before we configure this, there's just a couple of things you need to know to make sure that this will actually work for you. And the two things that are important here is that you'll essentially need to use one extra port that you normally wouldn't have. You would have a direct connection to the router. And you also need a unified switch that is VLANs, which is essentially all of them at this point. And especially the ones that you'll most likely use, like the Flex, for example. Or in this situation, I have the Ultra here. Okay, this is the Ultra also has a port in the back. And this is actually my setup here. So I have a Starlink Mini, I have the Ultra. So it goes into port one. I already had this connection going on, right? This is just an uplink. This is how the switch is connected. N nothing fancy going on here, but the switch is connected to the Unify router here, UDM Pro Max. The kind of weird thing here is there's some settings on this port uh, that you're trying to kind of mimic a WAN port, right? And there's also this jumper that happens, which is why you need a additional port and you're going to have a essentially like a patch cable. So it's a LAN to WAN jumper that we're going to do. And I have this set up as backup internet, but you could do the same thing, just so you know, right? You could have configured it like this port to this, you know, primary WAN port. You can also reconfigure that. So don't worry too much about that. I just want to show you that that's possible, but I'll start from scratch and I have a Unify Cloud Gateway Fiber here and a 2.5 gigs uh, Flex Mini. So we'll go from scratch and I'll show you how to configure this. Okay, so I'm um, here in the Unified Dashboard, UCG Fiber, and you'll see I do have a primary connection, WAN 1 going on, so we're configuring this as our backup, our WAN 2. So first, let's go to settings. And I don't have any other networks, but we'll go to networks for now, and we do need to create a new virtual network. So this will be, we'll just call this Starlink Transit, or you can call it like WAN 2 or WAN 1 Transit, depending on what you're doing. And our router is going to be third-party gateway. Then we need a VLAN ID, and you just want to set something that you know, you're not going to use elsewhere if you still need to configure all your other VLANs. So I'll just go with 200, click Create. Then we want to set a Ethernet port profile. So go to, let's go to Overview here, and Ethernet port profiles, create new. Okay, and this is, I'll call Starlink Transit again. And this is for, let's go back to the diagram. This is for this one in red, and this one in red is gonna be the same, same idea. This is what kind of uh, unique configuration that you need to do in order to make this work that it doesn't mix uh, with you know your local network. So Starlink Transit, we need to set the right the native VLAN should be our 
whatever we called our WAN2 kind of transit. So in my case, it's Starlink transit. Tag VLANs, we want to block all. And that should be it. Just those two settings, apply, close. There's our ethernet port profile. Okay, then we want to set our internet, our WAN ports. So whenever you pick up a unified console, right, they have typically WAN1 and WAN2 pre-configured on some of the ports that they want you to use, and they'll have this little internet icon physically on the actual ports, but you can reconfigure, reassign them as you need to. So you'll see port five, just like in my diagram, port five here is my primary internet connection. So that's where you used up. And then port four is also used, right? That goes to my switch. And the way I have it here in the diagram is I'm going to set port one as, I, as my WAN two. So that's all I do. So here's my port one, WAN two. So that will be my secondary internet connection and you'll see the icon change there. Okay, so I'm I'm set with that and now, now I need to go and actually configure these ports as, as needed. So let's go ahead, let's go to the switch first. So go to the ports view here, make sure you have ports diagram and that you're looking at the correct equipment. So this is the switch here, All right? So port one, like I said here, port one is the Starlink terminal or Starlink mini really. Now I can manually reconfigure this or I can click here under advanced, click on manual and select ethernet port profile. And this allows you to click any of the profiles you made. We just have this one, click apply changes. Okay, so we see that profiles here are native VLAN as it should be. Okay, so that's where we're going to connect our Starlink in a second. Then let's click, so here's our unified console. Let's go to the port manager of that. And here's our internet icon, our WAN, right? So same thing here for ports, no, not for here. This is our WAN to use for, so for port two, our LAN to WAN jumper is going to use the same configuration. So not this guy, but this guy, we'll call this LAN to WAN two. And again, it's under advanced, you go manual, ethernet port profile and Starlink transit. Let's apply that. And this port one, we can actually now name this, that this is, it is a LAN port. Okay, and really I should have named this also. So this goes to our switch. Let's maybe call this switch one. See, you see not, nothing changes here. I think I mentioned earlier, you could. So for these ports here, the uplink to the router. So in this case, port five, I have it set up as the native VLANs core, which is, or default, which you would usually do. And tag VLANs is allow all. Now you could restrict this. Uh, and on this side as well. So this is port four. You could restrict this not from allow all, but certain VLANs that you know you're using. I just want to point out, if you don't want to do allow all, just make sure that you enable the Starlink Transit VLAN as well, okay? That needs to be there. Otherwise, just stick with allow all, which should be the default. Okay, so now, now I'm set. So I can physically go plug in the Starlink here and then plug in this jumper, just like that, just like an ethernet patch cable. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so faster than I click record and set my desk, you'll see I already have WAN2, there it is. Okay, it's showing you uptime, 0.26%. That doesn't mean anything right now, right? Uh, I just plugged it in, but there it is. So it's already running and I could unplug the primary internet, but that's just kind of how I'm showing you this. I won't have a connection to it, but that's how you can test it. If you are using this as backup, just unplug your primary one and it should instantly fail over to this one and keep working. So we can go here to ports, right? And you'll see there's my Starlink connection. These two are connected. Okay, and if we go to the switch, okay, so you'll see, that's why I named Starlink Mini. It looks a little bit funky here, but that's the Starlink connected to port one. Okay, so just this is my connection right here, just as you see it. And you know, if you want to look here, maybe I can figure out a way to make this downloadable so you guys can have this. If, if so, I'll have it in the comments, but it just shows you a UDM. If you want to set up like that, you can you can do it. Something like this is probably a nice setup. Now, if you do want to run your Starlink like this, kind of especially as backup internet, you do want to watch my video I'll have up here next, where I show you how to configure the Starlink in bypass mode so you can get the best performance. So I'll see you there or down below in the video comments. Either way, thanks for watching. Take care.